All right, open disclosure fans around the world. Uh, if you're not on Instagram and following uh, PGA memes, you're missing something. And I found this guy and I've giggled and I've, I've, I've had to wipe my eyes at times, Travis, because you've had me laughing so much. And then I'm happy to see, you know, these guys I get to call on the golf course. Some of them are now interacting with you, but more about that in a minute. Uh, Travis Miller, welcome to our On The Mark show, man. How are you? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me, man. Excited to to jump in some of this stuff and share some fun stories. Well, speaking of exciting, I mean, I, I was, it's my honor to have you on and, and my head was sort of turned here recently where um, I, I sort of knew who PGA memes was, but I didn't necessarily know who you were. And all of a sudden I connected the loop or the dots when you were um, essentially honored for making a sizable financial donation to an organization in Dallas where you live, if I'm correct. So so let's put you into context for the global audience, please. Tell us who you are. Yeah, so I'm just every everyday uh, hack on the golf course. I got into golf uh, really through work, through mm -hmm. client golf, and I fell in love with it really quickly, as a lot of people do. And I realized that my baseball career didn't translate very well into the golf course, so I struggled and still struggle to this day in various aspects, which we could we can get into. But I found golf to be an escape for me. Uh, from my day-to-day -day life, whether that be the grind of working. I traveled a lot for work, um, you know, just relationship, your time with kids. It's like go getting out on the golf course, there's just truly something special about it. I don't care if it's a Muni or if it's, you know, Pebble Beach or wherever you're at. It's like you're sitting on a great piece of property. You're out in the, the wilderness. You're enjoying a, a game that's can be so rewarding and so challenging at the same time. Uh, and back to back shots, you know, and I, I fell in love with it. And so for me, I saw something completely different, Mark, than what, you know, most people look at with golf. I mean, you, when you watch it on TV and the broadcast, it's definitely a sport that's serious. You don't see a lot of the uh, animation or excitement or the personality with the players. They're playing for a lot of money. They're playing for FedEx Cup points, world rankings. And when I'm playing with my friends, I mean, it's like maybe we have a drink or two, maybe we're betting on something silly. You know, there's a lot of smack talk and I always left, man, with, with having so much fun and camaraderie and with those clients that I play with, I built this bond and these relationships. And I'm happy to say too, that some of my strongest friendships are from companies that I was at two to three, you know, jobs ago, but we built these relationships on the golf course, spending six hours of time with each other and really getting to know who each other's were, you know? Yeah, certainly. Uh, I'm so glad you say that. I, I had some long sleeve t-shirts, mate. I'm a fan of a long sleeve t-shirt for what it's worth. And I had just written down the corner, heart and golf, love golf. And I'm so glad to say that because, you know, everyone who downloads this thing, they're sort of downloading to get better, but you, you know, the grind of it at times, it can sort of get in the way. And then I wouldn't say you lose the love for golf because you want to go and play, but I'm very holistic in how I approach it. And so what you share there is so appropriate because if you really love it and you're having fun with it, you're likely to do better, huh? I mean, you've, you've played baseball at a high level. Yep, 100%. And it's, uh, you know, I got to the point where I was getting better and I was taking it very seriously. I'm a competitive person in, in a lot of things I do other than just sport. And I'd get to the point where I'd, you know, get mad or I'd throw a club or I'd, you know, verbally express a dis displeasure with myself over something. And then I, I, there was a moment or two where I realized that, I might not be that fun to play with today. And, and <laughs> it was a very uh, self-aware uh, aware moment where I was like, okay, this is not who I want to be out here. I want to be someone who people enjoy to be around and have fun, you know, and, cause that's who I like to be around is people who I enjoy, like their, their positive energy. Maybe you learn something every time you're around them or whatever, you just genuinely have a great time. And, mm -hmm. You know, I was like, listen, I need to to dial it back a little bit. I'm not going to be going to play on the weekends for money or anything like that. This is just for enjoyment. And yeah, I want to get better. I want to beat my friends. But the minute that I did that, I felt like I got much better at golf because I was just enjoying it. I felt like the, the, the re recovery time of bouncing back from a bad shot was much quicker. Um, I was just more self-aware of my surroundings and I felt like I was more level-headed, but you know, golf is golf is great. I've got to meet some amazing people even before I started PGA memes, but now that PGA memes has started and it's it's continued to branch out, I'll pinch myself often to be like, I cannot believe, you know, I'm hanging out with this person or playing golf with that person. And 
Um, people, are saying, really people are saying the same thing about you right now. You realize that they're like, yeah, we're doing with Travis a little bit. <laughs> no, people say that stuff. I'm like, okay, that's just crazy because to fat rewind three years ago, like I'm just, you know, I had a really great job as an executive at a big company and was doing what well for doing? myself. But, um, so it was in the smart home security space. Uh, okay. and I got into it as a sales rep and I started a company with some friends shortly after and we became one of the biggest authorized dealers in the country for uh, ADT. And I got recruited by the corporate companies to come work for them to, they wanted more of an entrepreneurial background to come run their, their dealer programs. So I went and did that for like 10 years, Mark. And, you know, that's what got me into golf was traveling around. I was helping companies with their sales and marketing strategies, but you know, I'd also like to get to know them and spend some time with them out of the office, which we did on the golf course. And, um, through all those fun things I found through golf, I found a way of bottling it in my mind. Like I do with most other stuff with sales and marketing. And I was like, Hey, I like memes. Like memes are something where like, I'll sit, I would be sitting there laughing at a meme because it was relatable to me. Right. And then I'd share it with like, you know, my family or I'd share it with a bunch of close friends. And cause it was, it was funny. Right. And so as with golf, I'm like, man, there's really no one doing this in golf. And there's so many things in golf that I think are really funny, uh, whether it be at the amateur level or even at the, the, the highest professional level of golf, there's funny things that happen on the broadcast or in, in tournament play. And so I just took that and put it on, you know, Instagram and PJ memes name was available. And like the next thing I knew after a few months, it really picked up. It was really popular and opportunities started happening. And then I just kind of formulated a strategy of, of how I could grow this thing and monetize it and then ultimately make it my career okay everyone wants to be an influencer heck i've got an 11 year old daughter who wants to be tiktok famous when she grows up she tells me and and, and, yeah. and she she's like wow dad your podcast has got like over six million fans i'm like yeah well i mean it's i'm just talking about something i love and so i share that to say to you now because when the golfer is trying to learn something new there's an element there's always an element of risk involved huh Yes. And and you are successful in your industry and then you move away to something that you kind of realize it could be successful, but you're not entirely sure. Speak to the mindset of, you know, stepping off first base in your goal to go and find second and not that I'm giving business advice or whatever to people, but I think there's a mindset to doing this correctly. If you could comment. No, there is. And honestly, it's one of my favorite things to, to talk about when it comes to this story, because I think it, there's a lot of people out there seeking that advice, whether it be changing just, you know, careers in a different industry, not it doesn't have to be an influencer by any means. But, you know, for me, like, I, I definitely don't dub myself as an influencer. And why I say that is, I had, you know, an extensive career in sales and marketing, and I was I was pretty good at what I did. And when I stepped into this space, I saw a lot of similarities. There's just a lot of companies. There's a lot of brands that spend their money on, you know, advertising, TV yeah. commercials, um, you know, <clears throat> ads on Facebook, Instagram, whatever it may be. And there's also a lot of people starting to work with, you know, or at this time, a lot of people starting to work with athletes and influencers on spending money mm -hmm. to promote their products. And for me, I stepped into the space and I had a very good mindful solution i felt like coming to these companies where i could really ensure or guarantee their return on their investment you know go over and above for them to make sure that we were promoting them and doing it through multiple verticals whether that be ads or in person events podcasts you name it and you know we've had a great time doing it. we cultivated a lot of great relationships with different brands and helped them but for me though when when i made that transition i was definitely fortunate to have that successful career and I didn't have to put the cart before the horse mm -hmm. at that moment I was able to kind of build it up slowly and when COVID really hit and people were staying home I was reporting to our company's CEO who was a complete germaphobe and he did not want anyone traveling okay well I didn't stop traveling for golf I was on the go day one still doing stuff and, and you know being safe and doing what I could do. But for my other job, I was working at home. And so I took full advantage of that. And I was able to really capitalize on building my business before I could exit. But I had a really good boss who has been a mentor for me, but he he's like, listen, I see what you're doing on the golf side. I tried to keep it private. There's yeah. a lot of times where I was trying to be the odds behind the curtain. Yeah, right. And because I didn't want to like make them feel like I wasn't prioritizing my work with them, which, which I was, but there was a balancing act. 
But for me, you know, he was like, I see what you're doing and I think it's amazing. He's like, I don't understand it. I don't understand how you're making money. I don't understand how you're building this, but I think it's amazing. And, you know, I want you to, you know, step in to maybe take over this company one day and be the CEO. He's like, but do you want that? Do you want to do that? Or do you want to go and explore this golf business and do more of what you're doing today and, and bigger? And I said, hey, five years ago, I would have taken you up on this opportunity and I would have gone under your wing and I would have wanted to maybe run this company one day. But the answer to that today is no. Like, I want to go explore this golf stuff. And he's like, well, hey, I'm proud of you. He's like, but what do you need from me? Do you need to be here another month? Do you need to be here for another 12 months? How can I help you? Yeah. And I told him, I was like, you know, I think it's fair to everybody that I maybe just do like 30 days and you know, go from there. And he wanted a little more time than that, like another month to like help transition um, my role. And I stepped out and what I learned from that though, and this is the advice I give people to answer your question is mm -hmm. it's scary uh, to yeah, do something like that. But you often hear people say, you know, you, you got to leave behind your job to support your, your side hustle full time. If that's what you're passionate about. And it's true. I mean, you said, you know, you've all these fans and, and subscribers and downloads, but it's, you're talking about something you love and you're passionate about. If you feel that way about your side hustle or about an opportunity that's presenting itself, it will grow and flourish. And it did for me. I mean, I was already doing okay, but those first four to six months, I mean, it really just blew up even more, um, not only from a growth perspective, but just from a monetary value as well. Um, because I was fully dedicated to it. I was passionate about it and I gave it my all every single day. And, and to me, that's the advice that I always give people is once you know, you're ready and you've got your feet cemented on the ground, put your head down and go, you know, don't hold back. Don't have anything else that's going to distract you. And, and you will be happy. You'll be happier down the road. You won't have, you won't have any regrets. Yeah. Well, what's that old cliche that if, if you do what you love doing, you'll never work a day in your life. Correct. Yeah, no, it's but, true. But, you know, I guess I'm the kind of guy, you know, Deep down, I'm a golf teacher who's now, you know, asked to talk about a game. And so I'm always sort of looking at the shadow side of things a little bit. And, and to that, you sort of touched on it. And, and I just want you, before we get into some of the funnies of this, because as a golf instructor, former golfer, guy who watches top flight golfers like front row seat, um, there's always this balance between passion and desire and fear. Mm -hmm. and, and now you were a little fortunate because you had some financial footing, if you will, before you started. But I want you to talk about that too, because oftentimes people are gripped by the the potential fear of failure, and then they, 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 they that almost kills the passion and the desire to go and do what they would love to do. You got a comment or two there, perhaps? Yeah, I mean, I think one thing too is surround yourself around good people. Obviously, that's a big thing, and and. Not everybody's fortunate to have a good network of friends or people who are business savvy or have had past success that you can lean on or get advice from. But I did seek out advice from a lot of people. You know, hey, I'm looking at maybe doing this. You might understand what it is that I do, but here it is at a 50,000 foot level. And mm -hmm. I kind of want to do this and that. And what are your thoughts? You know, and I, I sought out advice just to give me that added confidence and and that's where we went and it made me feel more confident about making that decision and then after that i mean as far as you know putting your head down and going i mean if if if, if you know if you have the right strategy and you're thinking through what you want to do and have a plan you know setting setting goals and sticking to them really changes everything in my opinion mark i mean yeah. you, i think people are all over the place and have big dreams and aspirations and you can get sidetracked way too easier in this too easy in this world of all the technology and all these things going on. If you, if you dumb it down and you simplify it, you know, you're gonna find instant success. And as you start seeing small wins, they continue to mount up and come bigger and bigger and bigger. And I, I mean that's the advice I would say, but surrounding myself around good people who I could get good advice and talk through really helped me kind of take that plunge for sure. Okay. Fantastic. Now, um, you're looking at what I'm looking at. I believe I'm sharing the screen. Is this correct? Yep. Yep. All right. So you can see PGA memes, 891,000 followers and growing by the day. Yep. Um, I, there's this hilarious stuff in here. And I see you were out with John Daly here recently at one other corporate function. <laughs> First off, the most, I know this is a random question, but I'm going to ask it nonetheless, because people want to know. 
Um, the most interesting person you've been around now that you're the PGA memes guy and you and you're going to these events because I'm sure you're mixing it up with a, a bunch of uh, leading golfers. Yeah, yeah. I mean, safe to say, I mean, John Daly definitely fits that bill quite a bit because, but he's he's what you see is what you get, though. You know, like the that's the one thing about John is, you know, seeing him, I was like. Okay, right, he's funny. He's got all these things going around, but like, is he that way in person? Is he that way in private when the cameras are off? And and he is, <laughs> you know, like, so what you see is what you get. And like, I was with him for the last three days or so over the weekend. And I mean, as you can see, the recent posts, the content, you know, was easy God, to come yeah. by. The guy's yeah. walking content. But, you know, as, as far as the tour goes, been around a lot of guys. And I guess what I could say is there's been a few that have been like a little disappointing with maybe how they are, All right. um, but n- not many. I, there's so many good people out there uh, that are just genuinely good pe- people. They're normal. You know, like you get caught up on watching some of these people on TV and, and you're like, and, and a lot of them maybe you look up to and mm-hmm. uh, with athletes and stuff and, you know, being around them, you're like, wow, this, this person is just an incredible good person. Some of them become very good friends of mine. Um and that, that's one thing that's really cool. I think about golf is I, I feel like not many people in the sport truly feel like they're bigger than the game. You know, like they're just, they're there to, to do a job, to do a living and they, they love being around people. Um, and, you know, I think a lot of them have enjoyed some of the, the, the humor and stuff that I've brought to the game. Some yeah. of them I've, some of them I've been hard on Mark. Uh, <laughs> I know. I want to get to yeah. that in a minute. Yeah. Some of them have been hard on and I've been able to make amends with all of them, but one. Um, and which is, which is good for me because we talk about lessons learned, you know, like, yeah, like there's some content that's, that's fun to do. Golf's just a personal sport though. Right. It's an individual based sport. I mean, there's some team function to it here and there, but it's an individual sport. So your, your failures are much more, meaningful to you than you know hey if you lose the super bowl or the nba finals like yeah it stings right um mm-hmm. but it was a team thing but yeah. if you go and like miss the cut over and over and over again or you do something boneheaded on the course it's kind of all on you and um yeah so i i've, I've learned my lesson there a little bit with some of that stuff but i would say most interesting person for sure has been daily that i've i've been around often just because he's authentic. And, and to that too, is the folks look at a picture of Santa Tiger. I want to, there's various, I want to sort of head on the way down. I'll probably miss some because your content <laughs> is rampant. Um, the I do want to say this because you kind of find, um, and I experienced this because you're out there calling golf and then you might have to interview them afterwards or whatever. And sometimes these individuals sort of seem larger than life. But the truth yeah. is they're just boys, huh? And, yeah. and And if one is brave enough to kind of be oneself around them, then they appreciate them because most times you have all these yes people around them. And, and I guess that's a lesson too, that you could likely share given your experiences in the corporate um, world and, and now where you are now. Yeah, 100%. So I, I was fortunate enough in the corporate world, we hired some celebrities and some athletes to come do some functions with us. And believe me, I'm just like anybody else. Like we hired Michael Strahan and Deion Sanders one day to come and be at this uh, Las Vegas convention. And I was, I mean, I was a fan of both of them, you know, more so Dion growing up, Michael more in my adult years, but, you know, Super Bowl champ, you know, Michael Strahan, like, I'm like, absolutely I'm excited to get to meet the guy. So I didn't fanboy over the guys at all, like, but a lot of people in our corporate office did. And you could just tell like their demeanors around that and how that worked. And um, Dion, for instance, had a, he was just an asshole that day like no one really had a good vibe with him whatsoever including myself and strahan was the opposite was the nicest person was just amazing taking a super bowl ring off letting everybody try it on and um dion we had another commitment with two weeks later at his home here in texas and i live just here in dallas as well and so there no one wanted to go Mm -hmm. and i'm like i'm like i'll I'll go you know i took one of my took one of my employees and we went up there and we were there when we needed to be, but it was about an hour before things started. And it was just me and my employee, Dion and his agent. And we sat there and had like the funnest conversation for an hour. And then throughout the event, like we hung around him and we had the best time ever. Nicest guy genuinely was asking questions about, you know, my job and what we do, my family, all that stuff. And 
like ran into him like a few months after that at the airport. We're both on the same red eye home from LA after a football game. He was on the NFL network or whatever that night. And he remembered who I was, was chatting with me. And I was like, you know, these guys are normal. Like they have bad days. They, they also have a life that we don't know about off the course. But to your point earlier, if you work, if you're around them and you just act like yourself and Better. you don't ask them just stupid questions, like you're part of like the media or fanboy or something like that. And you just are yourself around them. They're going to truly appreciate that much more. And that's, that's one thing with me is I could be different when it comes to going to like the PGA tour events or um, functions, these guys are around and I could have a camera guy with me, or I could have my phone out and filming all these things. And, and you see people that do do that. Mm -hmm. um, and that's fine. And and honestly, like some of the brands or pages are big and, or, you know, maybe bigger than mine even and do that, but I'm just not that person. Like I kind of like to have my own space there too. And like fit myself in and, part of what I've done too is had to prove myself. Like I was super successful at an early age in my last career. And with this, I'm already running against, you know, I'm running uphill already with PGA memes is the name of the business. People are like, what the heck is that? And uh, <laughs> who is this person? And, yeah. and I, no one knew who I was really. And if I was someone who was trustworthy or someone who was genuinely a decent person, and so I think over time being myself and treating these people like normal human beings and then seeing some of the, the charity work that we do, I've been able to establish a lot more credibility and respect from, from the guys and, and, you know, even from the media and, and from people who I interact with, which has been, which has been great. Cause then it opens more doors for me to do things. And, you know, we, we do this home course show where we go in and, and film people's homes, All right. kind of like spin off of MTV cribs and, right. That's a tough thing because you're 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 going into someone's private space, you know, in their home, mm -hmm. and you know, not many people are probably going to say yes to that, as, you know, and it's it's important that you know for those that I do ask or I do it with, like they're, they're comfortable with me, and so it's definitely a process. And I've seen a lot of people that are influencers or are trying to do something that I'm doing. I see them not doing this part of their job well, That's and players around them and they're like okay last time i don't want to be around this person ever again it's such a lesson authenticity i mean as it comes to game improvement too you you got to be who you are you got to try and do what you're able to do if, don't try and go and be someone else or try and like you know to speak of the fanboy thing like you're too up in someone's business you know it, it can catch up with you um let's giggle a little bit <laughs> this one made me laugh and for the folks listening on audio only you can go and see this on youtube on my website, markimmelman.com. And this one is Ricky Fowler in mittens. It's obviously a cold day outside. <laughs> and this was timely because it was over Thanksgiving and you were like, who's playing some G before Turkey Day? Happy Thanksgiving, hashtag, right? But you've got the picture of Ricky kind of looking kind of glum in his face a little bit because it's cold outside. He's got the mittens on. And you come up with a meme when you try and get 18 in on Thanksgiving, but your wife needs you to rush home and take the turkey out of the oven. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> you did have me giggling I, I, something like this talk to me about the inspiration of this pick yeah you know, it's just random stuff like you know you've, you've heard the saying too like a picture's worth a thousand words or you know, yeah. a million words or whatever it may be that's kind of why i see things too like when i see these golf pictures or funny things i'm like how is that relatable to golf or how can that become a meme and instantly I, i've seen pictures of of ricky and those men's and I'm really good friends with Jason Day, and I give Jason the most uh, crap for that. Is he will um, wear those mittens all the time, and it's like 65 degrees. I'm like, are you serious right now? You live in Ohio, like, and you have to wear these mittens that are this big. Like, give me a break. But yeah, it's just fun to find some little inspiration, find some humor, and give some people a good laugh. Yeah. Now, speaking of good laughs and humor, well, there hasn't been a whole bunch of it, uh, whether you're on the live side or the PGA Tour side. And I just picked this because you've split the screen in half. And then you've got the PGA Tour and Liv written over two women who look like they're not mud wrestling, but they're wrestling. And then you see the fans adjacent to this kind of what looks like a bong or something. And they're watching this, having a good time. Um, yeah. It's it, you know, it was sort of funny to me because this whole thing's so serious and, and, and the folks in Liver with lawsuits and stuff like that. And it's, whereas it's a bit disturbing. You know, I think sometimes looking at things in 
with a little levity is is also not a bad idea. So comment on this one a bit for me, please. Yeah. So, you know, I've taken a lot of heat this last year just because like I'm more open minded about this whole thing because, you know, Mark, I came into golf later on in life. Like I was 25 when I even touched my first golf club and like I didn't grow up, you know, watching the PGA Tour a lot. Like, of course, I'd be, you know, somewhere in like it was during the Tiger era where he was winning nonstop and people like, oh, you got to we're watching Tiger right now or, you know, this is going on. And so I, I tune in. But I don't have that like long loyalty to like the PGA tour because of tradition. Uh, and, um, and I've tried to do a lot of stuff with the PGA tour. Um, I would love to just go to like an event and spend the first few days during practice rounds and maybe shoot some stuff with, with players who are willing and, you know, do some fun stuff to not only grow their personal brand, but to grow that event or to sell tickets or whatever. But Unfortunately, the PJ Tour hasn't really been that inviting. And that's not just it's not just me, it's to everybody. Um, because they have like their media rights and different things that they do. And I think they're trying. Like Liv has forced them to do some things differently. But on the flip side, I've gotten invited to go to live events and do some of the stuff. And they're obviously the opposite. They're like way more open to that. And so I've taken the bait. I've gone over to a couple of their events and man, it is toxic it is like so toxic how it's like you're either one side or the other and it's pretty crazy so when i made that i just thought it was so funny because you know to me like i just am like i like golf like i wish it wasn't divided i wish that they could figure something out you know i wish it was just like a little more happier and you know i'm tired of the questions in the media and stuff like that but yeah i think the golf world needed some humor when it came to live and pj tour so anything i can do there it's been fun Speaking of humor, this one I giggled at. Um, well, anything involving Tiger is going to get a little bit more reaction. Hold on, let me scroll down and see. Uh, over 12,000 likes and whatever you got on this one. <laughs> Audio folks, it's Tiger Woods. On the left image, he's got the million dollar grill, multi million dollar grin, the Tiger Woods cap on, and the black mock turtleneck. And then the next picture, Jason, as he's looking frustrated as Rip, he's had to take his hat off his head, and it looks kind of no, you know, messy a little bit and slightly thinning hair as some of us elder states people have to deal with. Okay. Um, and your, 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 your quip with this is when they make you take off your hat to sit down at a restaurant. And I just like, this is so real and it's so funny. And once again, you just found like the perfect images, like you were looking at, it felt to me like you were looking around to find these exact pictures. And, and I'm keen to know how this one came about. Cause this, I'm sure it took some work. Yeah, I mean, because so I've been in that moment and it's funny because like when you're a golfer, you kind of just tend to wear a hat more often than not because it's just kind of part of your 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 whole repertoire every day. But then your, your, hair, <laughs> your, your hair is thinning out too and all that stuff. And so when you go to a nice restaurant and they're like, hey, you take your hat off or, you know, whatever, like that happened to me in recent months. And I remember I was with two other guys in the same situation and we were all kind of like, ah, uh, but, and we were with a bunch of people weren't prepared for that. So we all kind of looked like clowns, you know? And <laughs> I, I think I came across the picture on the right first, a tiger. And I saw like, you know, it, obviously tiger's hair is thinned out quite a bit and whatnot. But he's, but, but he's even for the folks watching, you can see he's got that tight fitted hat on and you can actually see how the hat squeezed into his forehead. So it's left a mark over there. Exactly. He needs to go up a size on that, I think. But yeah, so, <laughs> so I saw that and I was like, you know what? That kind of just brought back that. And I'm like, that's funny. And so then I searched for some pictures around that day. And like, sure enough, I see the picture on the left where he looks like a million dollars happier than can be. And so, but it's funny, like the comment you see on the screen too, like with his money, I don't know why he doesn't just get the LeBron because there's been so many LeBron memes of the biggest comeback in sports history is LeBron's hairline. <laughs> <laughs> You, you, so I don't know why Tiger hasn't just gone that route either. He's had plenty of time off camera, you know, through his rehab and stuff where he could come back with a great head of hair, but just hasn't done it, I guess. Hey, you, you, you talked about sitting in the restaurant and you're a group of you guys looking like clowns. Now, I, I resemble this meme over you. I resemble this remark. And it's amazing. And I'm trying to get to a golf lesson. So, yeah, so humor me for a minute because there's something to be learned from this where most golfers, like when we're on the range or something like that, we so aware of not looking like a dumbass in front of everyone else over there 
that you are maybe not practicing what you weak at where you should be working in your weakness, but you hitting the one club you had well, cause you want to show that you're a bit of a boss, right? Yeah. It's kind of like when I've got to take my hat off going at the restaurant, it's downright grizzly looking. I'm graying, I'm thinning and, and you're so self-aware, but to your point that like, take off your hat, you are, you are just be you and, 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 and almost live relish the situation maybe even, huh? Yep, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you're going to give me something a little more deep there. Um, there's there's one right beside it. There are millions, folks. You must just go and look. I'm not going to keep you too long. But yes, Keanu Reeves. And the quote at the bottom of the picture is, yeah, I'm thinking back. And then it's me blowing up on the back nine after shooting my personal best on the front. And the, <laughs> you right there, always a tale of two nines with a little laughing. Always. Yeah. Always. <laughs> there is a lesson in this one. That's why I picked it. Because, you know, how many times have you gone out there, played fantastic on the front, and then your evil twin shows up at the turn, and then you couldn't hit the broad side of a bot. I mean, it's nuts, isn't it? It is. And I mean, so I love the John Wick series of movies. I love yeah. the I love those. And so I, you know, see this Keanu Reeves meme and then, but it relates to me as I, you know, and I'm your everyday hack, you know? So I look at things like, hey, how do, so not everybody's Tiger Woods, you know? not everybody's you like not everybody is like at the top level of golf instruction or golf play. And, you know, to me, it's like, there's the tell of two nines. And at the end of the day, that relates to so many people and it's just fun to bring these to life and make people laugh. Yeah. Happens in the pro game too. All right. Last one, you talked about him, Jason day, and this is an image you've obviously photoshopped the heck out of this thing because it's Jason who is quite cute. And I'm saying that in the manliest sort of way I can, and he's a great guy, which makes him nice. And, uh, and this is Jason with long brunette hair and little lipstick and the big smile and the hat in his head. And he, you know, he looks sort of like, almost like Minji Lee in a way, I guess. Bit, yes. And, and <laughs> your question is agree with some laughing faces. And it says how many beers it would take to get with pro golfers as women. And then Jane day kind of cute, just one beer. <laughs> <laughs> question yeah. did jason see this and follow oh, yeah. he did what did he have to say about this oh yeah he so like i said him and i are close so he like someone had sent him the screenshot and he he, he texted it to me and he's just like he's like hey mate i'm like i don't even know if i need the beer i'm pretty hot or something <laughs> like that uh, I love it. <laughs> that's so cool all right enough of that folks can go to pga at pga memes on instagram um is it is there twitter as well i'm embarrassed to say i'm not familiar with that yeah so kind of just started with twitter a little bit i've been more on instagram and youtube um the youtube content is more like long form kind of content yeah. with like like those home tours and stuff but mainly been instagram but we're looking to get on these other platforms uh just because i know like you mentioned your daughter earlier about tiktok and stuff it's like you know, I'm not a big TikToker, but I know there's a lot of people that are out there in this world that love that. So trying to expand it out to different audiences. Awesome. Okay. I'd asked you folks, let's get a little golf here right now. Um, just one or two lessons, things you've learned in your own personal golf journey, I'm an athlete, baseball player, turned business person, found golf, fell in love with the game. Um, nugget, maybe you've picked up along the way playing in a pro-am with someone or, or one or two things you can share with folks because here's how I see it. I feel like as people who want to get better and everyone who downloads this thing, by definition, they do, um, we should be stealing with our eyes, but we've mm -hmm. also got to have the wisdom enough to know, okay, what would work for us and not just try any old thing because you'll turn into a little bit of a mayhem then. So sure. from your point of view, what can you share? Just some lessons learned about golf and playing golf better along the way. Yeah. I mean, the, the, the few, the few strong things that really helped me out of the gate to get from like shooting a hundred to shooting in the, in the eighties quickly <clears throat> was obviously the mental game. I talked to you about that earlier, just about like being able to forget about a bad shot. Like we're going to all make bad shots. And I mean, some of us more than others, but don't let that carry on and cause another bad shot and another bad shot and another bad shot. And that was something that I had a hard time figuring out it was like you can start out with a triple bogey and still shoot a great score maybe your personal best yeah but i would shoot a pr triple bogey on the first hole and i'd be like all right all bets are off today's yeah. done. Yeah. done where's the cart girl you know whatever and that was a big struggle but then then it's about committing to shots um i had a hard time with commitment of of like hey this is the shot 
go through your pre-shot routine or your mind, your go through your mind of how you're going to execute and then fully committing to that shot. Um, even putting strokes, you know, it's like you almost jab out of putting strokes, but you got to be, you have to commit to what you're going to do. And obviously through that, there's so many things you can do with your swing or your stroke to get better, obviously, but just those commitment uh, issues. There's so many people who have them. Every time I play golf, I just feel like I run into people who are afraid to commit to a certain shot because they're worried about not executing. And the biggest thing for me was getting from a place where I was shooting higher scores to lower scores. The way I, the way I approached it was just protecting five. I was like, I need to protect five on every hole. Right. I'm like, wow, if I shoot a five on every hole, I'm going to shoot a 90. Yeah. And then I'm like, I talked about this the other day. I like this. And I'm like, yeah, I'm like, but at the time I'm shooting in the nineties and shooting, you know, maybe in the low hundreds. And I'm like, if I just make a five on every hole, I'm going to shoot a 90. I'd be pretty happy with that. Mm -hmm. Might be mad to make a, a five on a par three, but you know, it is what it is. And I started doing that and it made me think through and have more strategy going around the course. Whereas obviously when I've been on the tour and practice round, or even during a regular round, you see that these players and their caddies, they do have a full-blown strategy around every shot. They, they talk through it. When you go play an average round of golf with your friends, you just kind of step up to the ball and swing and hit it. But it, it gave me a little bit more strategy to it to where I could think through it a little bit more and be like, hey, look, put it in this position. Because the worst thing you're going to do here is get up and down for you know, a chance at par. Mm -hmm. But if you don't, you make a five you know, you make a bogey or whatever, no big deal. You keep on track to your score. And then slowly what I started seeing was I was making pars. Yeah. And then the worst I would do was five. And then I was shooting 84 and 82. And I was like, whoa. And, you know, and then like my confidence was through the roof. And I'm like, okay, now I'm, you know, working on my swing and getting through some stuff. But that helped me a ton, you know. And it there were some situations, though, where your man card gets questioned, you know. <laughs> Because I mean, I'm not, wait, wait, I want to see a meme coming up here and, 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 and a tribute to this conversation with testing your man card. Okay, but go ahead. I'm gonna send it. I'm gonna send it to you because I've made one that is so funny. Like it's Kermit the Frog, yeah. and he's like looking kind of like to the side, kind of like like he's like like nervously kind of like looking at someone's response. Uh -huh. It was like about you being on the par three, and you're like, what club are you guys hitting? And your friend says he's hitting you know, an easy nine and you're holding your five iron or something <laughs> like that. <laughs> and it's, but I'll tell you the first couple of years I was playing getting better. I was more worried. I was just as worried about what people thought mm -hmm. about some things like that as, as I was about the shot that I was about to hit. Mm -hmm. And who cares? Like if I have to hit a five iron on this shot, but it's going to get me to the green, who cares? Like, yes, off the course, you should work on that. You should probably get your, your swing more dialed and get your body through it or whatever is causing your lack of distance. But if the five iron is going to get you there, then hit the five iron. Like, why do you have to be Mr. Tough guy and take out your, you know, seven or eight iron and be short or fall in the water, but be like, oh, I just hit it a little fat or something like that. So that was a big thing for me was putting my ego aside and playing my game and hitting the clubs that I knew were going to get me there. And yes, there were some humbling moments though, where it was like, Hey, whoa, why are you hitting that club? You know? And it's like, well, I just, I'm, I'm not as good as you, or, you know, I've never really gotten lessons and this is what's going to get me to the promised land over there. So what, um, a lot of folks would call him crazy. I think he might at times too, uh, but I've had the luxury of spending some extended time around Bryson. In fact, he came on the show, uh, DeChambeau that is. And you know, when he came out, these clubs didn't have numbers on the bottom of them. He'd given them names like beta and stuff like that. And in a funny sort of a way, it helps with that sort of deal where some dude's like, well, I'm hitting a seven iron and he's going to, he's basically popping veins out of his neck to get the thing to where it's got to go. But you're mm -hmm. like, well, I'm just going with Sally over here because she, she looks right for the shot kind of thing, you know? <laughs> no, hundred percent. And like, you see it every time you go off with amateurs, but it's like, Hey, what are you going to hit here? You got 180, you know, blah, blah, blah. And it's like, the one golfer who maybe has a great swing and gets some lag and gets their body moving, maybe they, maybe they are hitting a nine iron, you know, that's great. But that doesn't mean that I should be anywhere near that. Like I know my distances or you should know your distances on the range or just what you've done in pre pre rounds, but you got to play your game and like, yeah, you might get made fun of here and there, but if you're hitting greens and then you're making putts or two putting, and you just string off a bunch of pars, guess what? That noise, it goes away. You know, it's like, 
now it turns into like at the 19th hole it's like oh yeah we got grandpa travis over here hitting his hybrids you know you know we're like hitting those long like, irons. Yeah, look at the last block on the scorecard big boy yeah, yeah. but it's like all right ha 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 pay up you know i won the the bet you know whatever it is but so you can work on those distance issues and stuff in, in your private time or on the range or with the coach or whatever but when you're on the course try not to worry about what other people are thinking and like so those little things collectively helped me a ton get from where I was shooting high 90s to like I'm I'm more of an 80 low 80s player and I'll I'll break 80 a few times a year. My lowest round ever was a 75. So I'm not your crazy good golfer, but I've seen strings of putting it together and playing well. Mm-hmm. But I don't practice. I don't have a coach and stuff and you know, if I had that I'd probably be a little better, but I just really enjoy the the time out there and with my friends. Yeah, but it's, this is going to be my last golf instruction um, question, and it's a follow-on to what you say there. And then remind me, because my 50-year-old brain sometimes lets me down, and I've got an idea for a meme for you. Okay. Uh, about the bag hawking. Um, you, you talk about practicing and playing and, you know, working on your game kind of thing. And for just about every golfer listening to this, now we have professionals listening and coaches and stuff, but for the lion's share of these people, that are listening and watching you and I now, they are business people or they stay at home moms or they, they've got stuff on the go and golf is the hobby. So I want you, because you hit it on the head there. You said, well, if I had more time, you don't because you're running a thriving business, multiple businesses now, yeah. and you play golf when you can. So my question to you then, Travis, is would you advocate that you go and practice on the range more or I don't know, work around the short game area or just go play? How, how do you see improvement happening from your point of view? Well, so I've been fortunate enough to be in the, in being close to the golf space. It's been amazing to see just the stuff that's become available to everybody that's in a position like me or like you that travel or you're constantly moving um, and working all the time to where stuff is readily available for you in your own home or in your backyard that you can have, you know, those, I mean, you've got the, uh, you know, track man stuff that's super expensive, but you can also get lesser versions of things that are much cheaper that are accessible to where you can hit in a net in your house, but get your shot flights. You can get all the numbers. You can learn through that. They record so you can send the the, the video footage back to a coach. I mean, it's pretty mind blowing to see like what's available and how. So but you still have to commit to it like anything in life. Right. You go to the gym, you go on a diet. You, know, you have a new goal for your business or you know, your relationship, you have to commit to it. You still have to put the work in and the time, but you can now do this stuff in your living room or in your office or in your backyard. And so I've started to do a lot of that um, as of late, because I just know that I have to drive 20 minutes, 30 minutes to go to a driving range. And if I do that, I'm going to spend time there and then come back and I still want to do it and I need to do it. But also when I'm not traveling, I want to be as home as possible with my kids and stuff. So it's like to go out and do stuff in my backyard and send stuff to somebody to look at and get that, that instant feedback is truly incredible. And I'd recommend for people to try that because you can get literally working several times a week. And most people I know aren't doing that with their golf game. I'm I'm on board with you behind me over here. You can see the, the flat, this is the flat scope Mevo plus small units, it actually comes with a golf course bundle. You can have a golf course simulator basically in your house and you can get all the data as well. So it's, I'm with you. It's a great way. And like putting mats and stuff like that, it's a great way to just, you know, carve 20 minutes throughout, or, you know, whenever, yeah. and then still be present as far as possible. All right. Great advice. Here's my idea. And this is about, um, you know, people wondering what other folks are listening at. As soon as you said that, I had a, 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 a word come in my head and I learned it way back in the day from, a former colleague and dear friend now, Bill Kratzer. And Billy has been around the block. He played golf in the tour way back in the day one, and he knows everybody. And he's just funny and abrasive enough as an announcer to say exactly what he feels and people respect him for it. Right. So, yeah. he, and, and he's got a term that he calls bag hawking. So yes. you know, a professional with a cat, he's sort of looking over like this and they're trying to see what the other guy's hitting. So these guys are bag hawking. And you see it a bunch on the tour, but you see it more in the amateur game, as you pointed out, like very worried about what the other guy's doing. So yeah. as you were talking about this, remember that movie with Jim Carrey, where he became the, they got the green face and the mask and stuff, right? And the big, yeah. long, like but his <laughs> eyes would sort of go out in a big, long way. I still sort of imagine people's eyes going, who's this guy trying to hit over you? And that's, 
you know, as much as what is funny, it's a little dangerous. And I think it's ruined more golfers than helped them. Yeah, no, hundred percent. Like I can see that right now. With the, I haven't seen that movie in so long. The Mask. That's a good one. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> no, but it's true. It's it's it, it. It. I guess it's happening at all levels, but it definitely is detrimental to people's game because it's it, well, it's just like in life, right? Like it, I always try to relate things to other things around you, but mm -hmm. the Joneses. That saying is real for a reason. You know, you're trying to keep up with the Joneses. Like, oh, you got the new flashy Mercedes or the big, you know, pool in their backyard. It's like. Do you really need that? Do you want to go spend your money on that? Or do you not want to do that and be smarter with your money or, you know, spend more time with this or that? It's the same thing with golf. It's like, oh, just because you're hitting the nine iron, does, does that mean I have to go hit my nine, nine iron? Or do you want to just go hit your six iron? You know, it's all about what's going to make it work for you. You know, and to me, like, obviously there's much more to golf in the swing, but there's so many, like, it's, it's your approach to it. It's that mental aspect of it, which I think is equally as important. And that's where I've come a long way. Now it's time for me to get to hone in my swing and do all that stuff. And who's to, you know, who's to say I can't get my numbers down after that. But I feel like the mental aspect of it, I've gotten a little stronger. Yeah, and that's a great advice you shared. I, I love the protecting five. I actually did. We're doing this run of Advent podcasts now and, and little golf tips and stuff one a day. And, and one of them was um, basically guaranteeing five in a way. And, and my observation was if you on every green in three, and you can guarantee two putts, you're going to make five every single time. So I'm like, in other words, go and get good at lag putting so you don't three putt. And then just get good at, at any third shot you would hit, whether it's a pitch shot or a chip shot or a bunker shot or a wedge shot or something. If you're good on third down in football, you no one's going to stop you. And it's the same thing in golf, really. You make lots yep. of fives and fives. Yep. All right. uh, keeping up with the Joneses, what if they want to keep up with Travis Miller? All right, whether it, share the handle, share where they go, share where they can find more of you, please, Travis. Yeah, come to Instagram, look at PJ Memes. Um, got a lot of fun content. Try to uh, appeal to all walks of life with golf. And then we've got this new YouTube channel that started about a year ago. We've got a few fun series on there. The most popular is our home course series, where we've got to you know tour the likes of Jason Day, Cameron Smith, John Daly um various other uh pros or legendary golfers homes and it's been pretty cool it's quite the treat and we've got a few new shows that we're working on now that we'll be launching for the new year and just excited to continue to build this out uh with everybody it's been truly a blessing and um really passionate about it and hopefully that shows to those that you know want to join along for the ride it's been a blessing to you i think it's been more of a blessing to us the fans um one last thing uh, i know players a bunch of players interact I know you sort of, you bristled up Lee Westwood one time, uh, right? Quickly share the story, please. Yeah, so uh, Lee and Luke Donald, unfortunately, have had such storied careers, but never won a major. And uh, I know that's a source of contention for Lee specifically. And um, I made a joke, if there's a picture of Tiger Woods, and I photoshopped Lee and uh, or sorry, Lee and Luke in the picture, and I said, "Wow, fifteen major championships in one picture." <laughs> and and like he immediately, and I tagged him in it and everything, and he immediately wrote, "He's like, oh, real funny coming from a bloke who lives in his mom's basement and has a small, you know, you know what." And like, and I like, I just die, I was dying laughing. I'm like, I cannot believe that, that he just messaged this or or he commented it. I was like, I cannot believe this just happened. I was laughing so hard, sharing it with everybody and. The comments, so I'll we'll tell you one thing. The comments, when you come at a meme negatively as a pro, it's not good. Um, so as, this is PR coaching here for anyone who's listening. Is like, just <laughs> go with, either ignore it or either like comment back, like laughing at yourself because then everyone gravitates towards you yeah. and is like, oh, what a great sense of humor, da, da, da. And you might hate me. You might want to punch me in the face next time you see me, but everyone's going to look at you in a good, a good way. With Lee, when he came at me, there were people who were on Lee's side coming at me, but then there, most of them were mm -hmm. people that were fans of PJ memes, like pouring on Lee. And I was like, well, I don't want that because I really don't have any ill will towards Lee whatsoever. Well, we got to meet in um, Abu Dhabi. And I was a little like, there was a few players that were in, in play that week that I was like, oh, it's going to be a little weird meeting these guys, but let's do it. And then when Lee came around... I interviewed him and it was with the tournament though. So I didn't have to really address myself as PJ memes or whatever. But when we finished up filming, I had his hand and I had a tight grip. 
and I go, Hey, thanks for everything. And I'm like, by the way, I'm like, I'm, I'm PJ memes. I'm the guy who runs that page. And he goes, I, I knew that. He goes, how's your mom doing? <laughs> like <laughs> we both got such a good laugh. And, good and what's though. cool is we became friends over the last couple of years and we were just with each other in Miami at his last event and had a few drinks and we're talking about maybe cutting it up and going on a ski trip together or something. And it's like, it's cool to see how that turned around. And, you know, I certainly don't want any ill will towards anybody or, you know, and, and I, I've crossed the line. I've, that's, I've crossed the line a few times and I'm, I'm towing it as much as I can now and being on best behavior. So yeah, levity is good. Um, I will say this too, and I'm sure you would uh, agree um, for any aspirant influencer. If I want to find out how bad of a golf announcer I am, I go to Twitter right away. <laughs> it's, <laughs> I, 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 it's, you've got to go in there. If you put, if you go and look at comments and you've done something, you've got to put on your armor because you never know what you, for, for every one person that likes you, there's likely going to be two that don't like you, but yeah. it seems like everyone likes you. So you're fine. No, nah, there's a lot of people out there, just keyboard warriors. They're tough. They think they can step in and do things better. And it's like, you know, it is what it is. I mean, I've had in the interviews I've done on these home courses and stuff, you know, people will just destroy me in the comments. Like, who's this person doing the interview? They're so boring or, you know, and it's like, I'm like, I just started this and like, I'm pretty proud of what we've done in the last couple of years. I'm like, yeah, I am getting better. You know, like you get better the more you do it, but it's like, geez, guys, like just relax a little bit and just chill. You know, like imagine going to someone else's job nine to five, walking in and just like hey you you're not doing very good like it's just like it doesn't make any sense you are fantastic for the industry you're full of wisdom um i appreciate everything you do and i'm so thankful travis that you would join us and, and share your story and share some awesome golf tips so thanks very much mate i appreciate you no absolutely thanks for having me and happy holidays 